Hi everyone, welcome to The Sip and Spin. I am the tipsy spinster. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I've been perusing social media during this year's Tour de Fleece, I've noticed that there has been an increase in popularity in certain styles, types of tools used for spinning. And so I am inviting you along today as I explore the use of a spindle that I have known about since I started spinning. I've had one in my collection since I started spinning, but I can honestly say I have only just started to explore the myriad of different uses that a spinner can utilize this particular type of spindle for. The spindle, of course, that I'm talking about is a lap spindle. And now these spindles are more commonly known as Navajo spindles, but that it's important to understand that's actually a misnomer. The Diné people were not the only people to use this particular type of spindle. It was also used by the Pueblo, the Hopi, and other Native American nations across the Southwest. So because I am not going to be using this spindle in the most traditional sense. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the Native American Euro sheep and yarn. I'm choosing to, one, refer to it as a lap spindle, primarily because as a tool, I'm taking it and sort of figuring out ways that I can utilize it best for the purposes that, that I need to use it for. So with that being said, one of the spindles that I'm going to talk about today is this incredible spindle by Danware. It's, he's a, a Canadian woodworker and he has created a spindle that is perfect for traveling. It comes in four pieces. One piece, of course, is the spinning bowl, which you do not need for a Navajo spindle, especially if you are outside or if you are sitting on the ground. Height is very important with this particular type of spindle, but my old knees cannot handle being on the ground for long periods of time. So I have discovered the right height stool chair that works really well with this type of spindle. So the whirl sits on very securely, which is great. There's no movement there. And then the shaft screws together like so, and it creates a wonderful spindle. Now, this one is a little bit shorter than the first one that I added to my collection. I'm going to talk a little bit about that one. This spindle I added to my collection right when I first started spinning. I got it at a Door County Fiber Festival in Whitefish Bay, and I was entranced. I thought, oh my gosh, think about the amount of yarn that you can spin on this incredible spinner. And then when I got in and started working with it, I had only ever used a drop spindle before. I was like, wait, there's no hook. There's, there's no way. I was at a loss. I set it aside and I did not go back to it until I started support spinning. So with that being said, I am going to show you how to get started on this spindle as if it were a support spindle and then ease into the idea of using it as a lap spindle. One of the things that I've discovered in trying to look for the evolution and why these spindles are the length and the size that they are, I have not been able to find a definitive answer. So if you know the etymology and why this spindle it was built and has, has stayed in this size over um, its history, basically, please chime in in the comments and let me know. I'm thinking that one of the main reasons why this spindle is constructed the way that it is is because of how the traditional Native American spinners used it. And if you'd like to see any of those videos, please check out Clara Sherman. While she's no longer with us, she was an absolutely amazing spinner and Native American weaver. And she clearly demonstrates the process of moving through the steps of using this in a traditional manner. And in doing so, I discovered that the instead of double drafting at the same time, Native American spinners would draft out and end up with a lot of fiber on the spindle, take it off, 
spin it again to get the consistency that they wanted, take it off, and then ply it by flipping the spindle over. So I found that to be incredibly fascinating and while I am very nervous about taking fiber off of my spindle without any kind of, of structure for fear of tangling, it made a lot of sense. If you're taking it off and it's still very fluffy and then you're drafting it out again and taking it off to ply it, it it, it started to make sense. So hopefully as I move through today's episode, some of those pieces might click together for you as well. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started in starting on a spindle like this. So, like I said, I'm going to demonstrate getting this started like a support spindle. And I can do that because this has a very narrow shaft up at the top and that's going to make it easier. I would not recommend spinning this like a support spindle because of the weight. And your fingers are going to get very, very sore very fast. The fiber that I'm using today is Euro. Euro is kind of an interesting breed of sheep. It is the traditional Native American sheep. It comes in 15 different recognized wool colors. And I have a sample of some of those colors in the basket. Now you have to be aware the, the wool colors are different from the genetic colors. And the wool colors are great because they come in names like Storm and sand and silver mesa and jaspered black or jaspered brown and jet which is the solid black and so i will be demonstrating with jet um, and i think there's also sand as well so the colors names are just fantastic so getting started i'm going to start exactly like how i would start with a support spindle um, I believe traditionally Native American spinners spun Z-twist first. As an American spinner, I am going to spin S first and then ply Z because that is what I am the most familiar with. So I'm, I have quite a bit on here and the fiber that I make on here is going to be sport or DK. I can spin finer, but I find that the weight of this spindle, even though it is supported, it does prefer to be DK or sport weight when it's plied. So I have all of this and I am going to use a temporary cop and I will draft some out. The spindle is designed to be a long draw. So while I have the temporary cop up here, I will go ahead and start using it as it was meant to be used. So I'm adding the twist and I'm drawing the fiber out. And then I will wind on. And I'm gonna build up quite a substantial sized temporary cop. Posture is important. Try not to lean down towards the bull, which I have a tendency to do because somehow I feel like that's going to give me control. If I'm down here, like with a support spindle, I get more control, but that is not good for your back. Likewise, you don't want to extend your arm out too much for too long or you're going to dislocate your shoulder. So once I get started, I'm going to bring my long draw back into a very tight, controlled space. So now I have a butterfly, which should give me enough to wind on down at the base. And as you can see, I have my drafting triangle.
and I'm gonna watch that triangle and all right so now I have these big pieces I could let it go and draft this out again but I'm gonna wind down to it and I'm going to go ahead and pull out these pieces And I will, the fiber that I'm using is very sticky. There is still quite a bit of lanolin in here, even though I have rewashed it. I'm still noticing quite a bit of lanolin, which is creating some stickiness. So, but that's okay. It just means that I will need to work a little bit to get these pieces drafted out before I let the twist travel into them. funny even when I use the spindle it's just like with my support spindles I always pick it up a little bit there's a little bit of a hop in the bowl Do a quick singles check. And just like with a support spindle, I butterfly it off and wind on. And then bring it back up. One of the things that I really like about this spindle is it's very forgiving and you have a lot of time to work with the fiber and I feel like you have a lot of control when it comes to putting in and building your twist and that control is what led me to the idea of using this spindle as a spindle for art yarn or novelty yarn. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. But, so when you have all of your single spun and you want to ply it, the traditional way of plying would be chain plying. And there is, it's kind of an interesting thing to chain ply on a lap spindle. Traditionally, it would not be applied this way. You would flip the spindle over and just use the smaller side. And I didn't understand that. I didn't understand why you would do that. So when I chain ply, I have seen this done and I thought I would try it and I am so glad I did. I have pre-chained my ply and as you can see, this is where the lip is. So it's right there and it's ready to go. And I, so I've pre-chained it and wrapped it around a ball. So now when I go to do the plying, I'm putting the twist in and I have discovered that plying this way helps to eliminate that bump 
a little bit. I'm getting a much smoother, uh, it's, it's a bump really, where that chain occurs. So this is a chain plying ball. And again, I have the control. which I found very, I just found fascinating as I was doing this. So this is, and I'll take a little bit off here. So this is what this yarn will look like when it is done. And this is a chain ply. And I'll set it and I'll definitely post pictures of this because I'm completely fascinated by this process now. I have a couple two plies. I do have a couple two plies that I have shown as well. This whole process got me thinking about art yarn. And so, Crystal, Spin Up Girl, challenged me to join her with a lock spinning spin along. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be perfect for those challenge days. So for those of you that are a part of the Tour de Fleece challenge days, there are two smaller challenge days and then kind of a rather large end challenge day. And for the two big challenge days, I thought it would be interesting to try lock spinning on a lap spindle. And I realized this tool is perfect for lock spinning. And here's why. I have so much control. I have all of the time in the world to get the lock exactly where I want it, to get it in the way that I want it to look. And my spindle is huge. I can put tons on here and I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to run out of room at all. So I wanted to demonstrate how to do this. So I have a single and the single that I'm using this is from uh, Long Draw James, and I can put uh, Ashen Flock is the flock that he is a part of. This is Badger Face Welsh Mountain. It's very springy. It's a fiber that is typically not known to be soft enough for next to skin soft. And so I thought, well, let's see what happens in a rug making scenario or a lock spinning scenario. So I have a piece here and the locks that I'm using, this is Anakin and I demonstrated washing Anakin a little while as well. This is Lester Long Wool. And so what I am going to do, I'm going to take a lock and I'm going to open it up. This is just one way to lock spin. There are so many. And you do, I don't want too much, so I'm going to split this one. And I'm going to open it up. And what I noticed with the badger face, it had all of these natural splits in it, which I don't know why. It just worked out that way. I'm going to tuck this in and under because I know it's going to want to grab. And then as I draft out, that lock is going to get caught up. And as you can see, it's already starting to go. It's going to get caught up in the single and become part of the single. Like so. And it's going to stay in there. My whirl was slipping a little bit. And it is secured in there. And it's going to be secured again because I'm going to ply it. So I will run this down, come up, and get ready to do another one. Open it up. This is not fast spinning. This is a slow process, and there's nothing wrong with that. I've had so much fun because I have never been able to produce a lock spun yarn that I really like until finding a way to do it on a spindle. So I'm going to do one more lock 
and it just gets pulled out and becomes part of the single. And then when I'm ready to, just like with any spindle, when I'm ready to get another piece on, it just joins so perfectly. And it is secured in there. I hope I could add a little bit more twist on this one. There we go. It is secured in there. And I now I have a yarn that has all of these amazing locks popping out of it. So with that being said, something else that you can do with a lap spindle, I encourage you to try it, challenge yourself, it's a great way to explore different kinds of spinning, being able to spin with a very large surface. It holds a lot of yarn. So my challenge to you will be, if you have a lap spindle, experiment and try spinning some art yarn on your lap spindle. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy spinning.